First Take is presented by Chase Freedom. The card is for the essentials. The cash back is for the fun. And in part by National Mortgage Lender Quicken Loans. Home by Refi Power. Kevin Durant, who is overseas as a part of Nike promotional tour, was asked by NBA Maniacs who is his all-time starting five, and this is who he came up with. At point guard, Magic Johnson, because he's a triple-double machine. Kobe Bryant, a five-time champion at shooting guard. Small forward is Michael Jordan, no debate there. Power forward Tim Duncan, picking him over Carl Malone because of longevity. And Shaq, who he calls a dominant center. Will, who is your all-time starting five? Humbly disagreeing with Kevin Durant. Here's my starting five. Okay. Magic, the same as KD, running the point. Mm -hmm. Jordan at two. Mm -hmm. LeBron at three. Tim Duncan at four. And then a guy I think is history is underrating as we go forward. Kareem at five. Yeah. I mean, Kareem deserves way more credit than he, that history has carried forward for him. Will Kane and I unilaterally agree on something. No. Hey. Same exact starting five. Same exact starting five. And I, and I, it's funny you pointed out the, the Kareem thing because that's exactly what I was going to say is I almost immediately was going to put in Shaq and then I was like, wait a second. How are we, as we move farther away from his career, doing the opposite of what we usually do, which is just like rosy colored glasses and glorifying. So mm -hmm. starting five exactly the same as, as Mr. Keynes. All right, let's take it a step further though. KD said he had to take Kobe over Bird, but you guys both went LeBron wide. I just think LeBron is perhaps history's greatest all around player from defense to scoring to assists to rebounds and at the three spot where we have LeBron that's what I want I want an all around player I think Kobe doesn't play team ball he's great but on a team like this I don't need somebody taking as many shots as Kobe would take I'll let that I'll let Jordan do that yeah. and the fact that LeBron has been criticized at times for not wanting to take that killer shot that that win the game shot well I've got guys other guys on this team like Jordan to take care of that I want the all around player that LeBron is and I take this seriously I almost take it like I'm I'm standing in you know the gym and I actually get to pick my team like we might actually play with this team that's how I think about it in my mind it's not co a collection of starting lineup figures where they don't actually play with each other so I wanted a lineup that I actually thought was comprised of the best players and would actually play well together which is why LeBron at three makes way more sense with Jordan than having Kobe in there with Jordan because I don't know how that team would play well together exactly so I also feel like we do this weird thing where we're like, five rings equals you are a five time better player than yeah. someone with one ring. I don't ascribe to that theory. I think a lot of rings is your talent level, but a lot of the other part is like who you played with and, and mm -hmm. the era in which you played. I gotta move us on though, because Serena isn't the only dominant female athlete, and we've been talking a lot about her lately, rightfully so. It's the WNBA season. I want starting five oh WNBA I'm all loving this. time. I'm team. loving this. So I got I'm glad I came up with that. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. So I got Dawn Staley, I got Diana Tarazi, Maya Moore, Look I got you with Cheryl all these Swoops, and Lauren Jackson. I could explain them all here, but Swoops changed the game. Tarazi's like the magic of the women's game. Yep. Maya Moore, I'm rocking her kicks right now, so I had to put her on. They're sweet. Dawn Staley, 1996. I ask for your approval on this, Kate. It, I've got Diana Tarazi She's running, running the your point. point. That's right. Cynthia Cooper, Tamika Catchings, Cheryl Swoops, and then how do you leave Lisa Leslie off? I just like Lauren Jackson better than Lisa Leslie. How do you leave Leslie? Lisa That's Leslie That's just off. a personal thing. I like Lauren Jackson's game, so. But my know. team's okay? Your you, team's all right. As long as you got Tarazi running the point yes. and you think it's a point forward situation, because otherwise you got you got no like, you, know, you got no Sue Bird on there. No Sue Bird. She's that legit. was my backup. Do you guys know that Tarazi actually isn't playing in the WNBA this season? She's, she's resting for Russia, who plays her ten times more than the WNBA. Yeah. Just to be a topic some other time. Thank you guys so much for hanging <laughs> with us here on First Take. Will, Kate, fun as always. Great Thank to have you. you guys. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. And Skip and Stephen A. will be with us. Enjoy your Labor Day. When the Eagles traded Matt Barkley to the Cardinals on Friday, it looked like Tim Tebow was going to make the team. Well, think again. Tebow was released by the Eagles on Saturday in the team's final cutdown to 53 players. Eagles coach Chip Kelly offered the following reasoning. We, we just felt like I think Tim's really progressed, but we're, uh, we didn't feel like he was good enough to be the three right now. This move left the Eagles with two quarterbacks on their roster, Sam Bradford and Mark Sanchez, before they picked up Stephen Morris off waivers from the Jaguars. Tim Tebow thanked the Eagles on Twitter saying this, thanks Eagles and Coach Kelly for giving the opportunity to play the game I love. Romans 828, hashtag blessed. Kate. 
Why is Tebow having such a hard time making rosters? Well, the number one reason is because he's not a great NFL quarterback. Mm -hmm. He is not a top 50 NFL quarterback. Absolutely. Th that is the number one reason. But the number two reason, and this is why I think Tim Tebow is like an interesting case study, is that in professional sports, I think we have this idea that it's 100% a meritocracy. Every single, pos every single roster position goes to the player who on the field or on the court performs in the way that's needed to be performed. And while that is mostly the case, I do think in professional sports, the back end of rosters are often more about risk management. I think when you look across NFL or NBA, and you're looking at GMs or the people who are making these decisions, there's a lot of this going on. When Terrell Owens was at the top of his game, but was also standing on lawns and making press conferences, we put up with that because the talent was up here. Now, once that balance shifts and in the NFL, you're not making a roster anymore. I mean, you look at Michael Sam. There's a lot of this happening, and that scale didn't come out in the right favor for Michael Sam to make an NFL roster. Now you look at Tim Tebow. I think that's a lot of what's going on, not him being able to get, not being able to get a number three spot because he comes with a lot more than a number three player should come with. I think when people look at the NBA, they think it's the 480 best players in the world. I think it's the 350 best players in the world, and then 150, 130 guys who GMs know are going to show up. Nobody's going to want to talk to them from the media. They're going to do their job. There's not a lot of risk. You can go over to Europe. They found one in Chris Copeland when he came and played for the Knicks, who actually can play in the NBA. But teams don't know that. There's some of that that I think happens in the NFL and that I think happens with Tim Tebow in terms of this balancing act. So Tim Tebow is being punished by the media attention he brings on to a team? So look, Tim Tebow's not a good enough quarterback to overcome the spectacle that he has become. Let's start with that. But then I think you do need to take into account what he means when you bring him into a locker room. Tim Tebow also, on the other hand, gets credit for bringing intangibles to the locker room that a lot of other guys do not get credit for. And I don't doubt that Tebow does bring a lot of those intangibles. To, to some extent, I would suspect it might balance out the negatives they're attributing to him as well. I would say Tim Tebow is not in the NFL because he's simply not good enough. You said he's not in the top 50 quarterbacks. Well, I would suggest he's not in the top 75, perhaps the top 96 quarterbacks in the NFL. I mean, each team is carrying two quarterbacks at least. That puts you at 64, and many carry three. In fact, the Eagles decided he wasn't worthy of the three. At first, it looked like, wow, Barkley, he could be the three. Mm -hmm. And then they cut him. It's like, maybe they'll just go with two. No, no, no. They picked up a third quarterback. It just wasn't Tim Tebow. So he's not in that top 75 quarterbacks. And I would say, I said earlier about mentioned guys who hadn't been given a fair shake. Vince Young, David Carr. Look at Tim Tebow. He's now had the chance, been picked up by Josh McDaniels, John Fox, Bill Belichick, Rex Ryan, and Chip Kelly. On that list of great coaches, perhaps the greatest of our time right now, Bill Belichick, and the guy who's being hailed as the most innovative, Chip Kelly, this is a list of coaches you would, you would love to give you a chance, that you would love to play for. Tebow's had that chance, and all of these guys eventually passed. He's yeah. just not good and, enough. And you, you may be right, and, and all of that may be right, that Tim Tebow isn't even in the top 90. I'm just pointing out also that there's a lot that comes with him. There's a lot that we don't talk about in pro sports about how guys number 15 on NBA roster, a lot of times they get the number 15 spot because they've been a number 15 before. They got drafted. They didn't go over to Europe. So I think there's a li there, there, that's a point to make about the lack of like 100% meritocracy across sports. It very may well be that Tim Tebow is just completely not good enough to overcome all of that. And to play devil's advocate, we don't have time to get into it. Some might look at it as positive buzz. Totally. And the maybe first just devil has the enough advocates, yeah. is what I always say to that. Okay. But yeah, you're right. It, it might be that like some teams might bring him in because they want just they want the Rex Ryan effect. And no one Listen, has ever been able to talked about yeah. Chip Kelly all preseason. They want their team to yeah, be more Actually, key. we might have still talked about him anyway, but. <laughs> I correct myself there. Okay, moving on. There can only be one starting center. Did Shaq make the cut? We will reveal Kevin Durant's all-time starting five after the break, and I hope you guys have been tweeting us yours as well. We want to hear from you.